Hello, and welcome to High and Tight on Game Time CT. I'm Scott Erickson, and we are joined, as always, by Pete Braga. Pete, welcome to the last show of the season. Uh, man, I'm sad. I know you always get sad for the last I always get sad. I always get sad. <laughs> I always get sad at the end of the year. This is my... a really melancholy sigh you just gave me. Yeah, this is, uh... well, it's either that or a combo of just exhaustion, overtiredness, you know, whatever it's been the last week. But uh, no, baseball season is is my favorite. It's, you know, it's too fast. Uh, it's so fast. I mean, it feels like just the other day we were sitting here talking about spring training and opening day and all of a sudden, poof, baseball's over. Yeah, it uh, it's too fast. But I, I really love. I just love this season. It, it really is, you know, coming off the winter and there's nothing wrong against it's nothing against the winter season. It ends nice, but it's just inside, 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 inside. Yeah, of right? course. And then you finally get outside in April and then you're like, this is great. And the baseball's so good. And then it's like in a blink of an eye, it's over. That's it. Yeah. So we had four state champions crowned, three first time champions crowned. Um, Two really good games, two games that could have been a little cleaner, but were fine and exciting and had lots of action. Um, the Ward Staples game, obviously, for anyone that was there, is a game that they're going to talk about for a long time. You know, state baseball fans will talk about that game for a long time. Two incredible pitching performances. Every inning was high drama, high tension. I haven't seen a game like that in a state championship where it was just literally every inning kids making huge plays and stepping up and yeah here Wyatt going against Griffin Polly and both were awesome and incredible and pitched eight innings it, it was everything that we wanted it to be and a little bit more I would say yeah I'm happy um that the game was as good as we made it out to be because you know nowadays it's a little different 10 15 year years ago teams would say, hey, I want to play this team. Hey, you know, you know, like talk like a little bit of smack, like through the media and through the papers and stuff. And obviously that doesn't happen at all anymore. You know, I think teams and coaches and players and players are taught, you know, don't give them anything for bulletin board material. Don't put anything out there. Like, let's just focus on ourselves, which I totally get. So on like our end, it's like, all right, well, we need to hype this game up. Like, cause this game <laughs> is going to be awesome. We know this game is going to be awesome. We talked about it on the podcast. We wrote stories. Uh, our columnist, Jeff Jacobs, story on hero and Polly. Like we hype this game up. We pumped this game up. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, I, I, I uh, messaged our editor and I was like, we, like this was everything we wanted. This was everything we said it would be and more. And it yeah. got to the point where I was like watching that game. Now I'm standing on like a seven foot, nine foot stool to shoot photos. So my feet hurt because it was a long game, but I'm also like nervous. I'm also like sitting there. I'm like, how is this game going to end? Like in my head, I'm like, I hope it's not something, you know, that's just a, a bad way to end the game, yeah. you know? And that game was so good. It came down to, you know, Griffin Polly RBI single in the 10th. Like, I mean, it was just a great baseball game. And, you know, you're going to listen to our interviews going forward with all the champions. But, you know, and they are there. They all said the same thing. It is not easy winning a baseball championship. It is the hardest. It's the hardest. It's the hardest sport in the CIAC to win a championship. And we got in double L the two best teams in the state, like in the same class playing they just happened to be on different sides of the bracket and they have you know what i mean and they met in the championship and we got to see an absolute instant classic and for that that made the long day of saturday a lot better knowing that we had gotten that game in the biggest game for the number one team in the state and uh you know it just it made it worth it you know and it just doesn't happen that often where you, you have you know and you know guilford was ranked two in our poll yeah but we all kind of thought that Staples and Ward were the two best teams all year. They were the teams that occupied the number one position the most time during the season. Uh, and to actually get them in a championship, it's very rare to have that quality of a game in a final because so many things can happen. I mean, Ward could have gone down to Southington. Ward could have gone down to Amity. Like, both yeah. those games were in question. Like, you know, Staples had some tough ones in there. And 
to get that set up, to have the pitching matchup and have it all work out. It was, it was kind of magical and, and something I'll never, I'll never forget that game yeah. and, and, and that day. And, uh, and then we followed it up with, you know, Nanawag and Brookfield and HK all winning the first championships. Obviously Mark Brooks winning after 45 seasons. Like there were so many great things about this weekend. It's already our favorite weekend. Like the games could all be terrible and it would still be my favorite weekend, but yeah, the, no, the fact that we got so many good stories out of it is is just remarkable. Yeah, I mean, Nanawag winning, they had a coaching change in the middle of the year. You know, Jimmy and Kyle kind of were co-coaches to lead them to a championship. Jimmy had, has coached all over, you know, the Valley, that kind of area around the state. Yep. Um, you know, so for him to win one and Kyle, who, you know, I've known Kyle for 10 years. You know, we started doing this job together at different papers and to see he left the field, became a teacher and, you know, to see him on the other side, winning a state championship was really cool. Mark Brooks, like you said, you know, he's been, he created the program. He's the father. He's the father of HK baseball. And he yeah. finally got his championship. And then you go to Brookfield coach Hart, you know, he played for Brookfield and, you know, he led them to their first championship appearance and then first championship. And that was special. And, yeah. uh, you know, we get to talk to all of them today. So uh, this episode is... This is also my favorite episode of the year. Action packed Because we have multiple kids on, coaches, and everyone's relaxed because the season's over. Yes. And they're, <laughs> most of them are finished with school. Like, Yeah, this is my least favorite episode to edit, though. Uh, yes, I understand. <laughs> it's really about Pete, two and a half hours. Pete, it's a lot of work, <laughs> but it's the best episode of the year yeah. for it to do. And I love talking to all these kids and everything. Um yeah, and just so quickly before we go to the interviews, um, yeah, I just want to give a big shout out to Brian and the crew at Palmer Field. Yeah, I mean, not only do they do an amazing job every year, but with the rain on Friday, I mean, it poured for like an hour and a half before that Class A S game got going on Friday night. And man, when it was time to play, I mean, the game got delayed an hour and one minute from start time. It started eight oh one was supposed to start at seven. That field looked incredible, and, incredible, uh, and held up really well all weekend too. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I say this on this show, and I don't know if there's any. You know, we have two. We're gonna have three with Quinnipiac building a stadium. Like we're gonna have these really nice baseball fields in this state, which is great. Please never ever move this game away from Palmer Field. I mean, it is just truly the best place to host a baseball championship. The crowds were great. And when the crowds are great at Palmer, you feel the energy. You feel the fans living and dying by every single pitch. I mean, I was on the staple side, uh, the first base side, shooting photos in that double L game. And you could feel it every inning. They got a runner on high energy. Ward had a runner on. Everyone was tense, right? It was the same way during the HK game. It was the same way, you know, every game you could feel it because the way that the stands are set up and the way Palmer Field is is set up, it, it truly is. It's the best place that hosts a championship and it hosts the best championships in Connecticut. And those fans were locked in that Staples Ward game multiple times. You had kids where there's two strikes. Everyone's on their feet cheering both sides. I mean, it was one of the best environments for a high school baseball game I've also been part of. But having said that, the Class S game was packed on Friday night. Yeah. And the game after that was packed. Like, so, there was a lot of fans that came so in. We never got an attendance S, number, but it was one of the biggest nights. So the S Friday night game, the it was – they didn't have more people than the double L. But originally I thought, because I was looking, I was like, there's a lot of empty seats. And then in my head it clicked. I was like, oh, everyone sat under the awning – in the next game because the seats were so wet. It yeah. was like the double L game, even the Nanawa game and the Brookfield Guilford game. Like there were people all the way down the right field line. There yeah. were people in the right field uh, bleachers. There were people all the way up the third base line. And Saturday you get people for multiple games crossing yeah. over. So you, yeah. do, you do get more people, obviously. Yeah. So it was, it was packed. I just, I just needed to, to give my love to Palmer field because I love Palmer field. I love Palmer Field too. It's centrally located. There's plenty of parking. Their concession stand is top notch. And the crew that runs that field does an amazing job. Uh, amazing. Like every year that place looks immaculate. Their press box is immaculate. Um, 
the announcer Scott up there does an incredible job. All the scorekeepers do a great job. I Love can't Scott. imagine this game anywhere else. Uh, and as, as awesome as those facilities are at UConn, Dunkin' Donuts, it would be totally different with that crowd in a in a bigger yeah. venue, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, no, it's it's truly top notch, and they treat it like a top notch facility. Yeah, and um, it's nice to see. Um, it's nice to see, and, and the kids love it. I mean, there's you see when they walk in there, and it's not a major league stadium, obviously, but you see the kids that have not played there when they first walk in, they're they're looking around, and you yeah. you know you don't see grandstands like that you know very often anymore. A covered grandstand like that, there's Muzzy and and there's here and there's Yale, but kids don't get a chance to play at those fields all the time. So really special, unique place. And it's a special place in my heart. I love, 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 love going there anytime I can. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we continue to go there every year. Well, we're under contract for a few more years. So hopefully they, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> they keep it going. Um, I, the CIAC seems to like it too. I mean, it accommodates the press. Well, it accommodates the teams. Well, um, and like I said, it's it, you can't be more centrally located than no. than that field middle, and that, than that middle than, town. Than, than Middletown, yeah. <laughs> and I did learn that Middletown and Middlebury are actually not near each other. Not near each other. They're <laughs> 30 minutes apart. <laughs> Middletown is near Middlefield. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Middlebury's over near Woodbury. Yeah. So got all kinds of geography lessons here. Um but we are excited to talk to all the state champions on this team on this podcast and share our last final moments of the season with you. Um, so we're going to get into those interviews now. We're going to roll through them, and then Pete and I will be back at the end to wrap it all up. Uh, we are joined now by the Haddam Killingworth players and coach, Coach Mark Brooks, players Kalen Powers, Joe Giancone, and Blake Camone. Guys, Woo! welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Good, to be here. Good to be here. What, uh, guys? I'll, I'll ask Kalen first. What's the last couple of days been like for you guys? You know, did you go back to school? You guys haven't graduated yet, have you? No, we graduated on Thursday. Uh, I'm not, I haven't been back to school because I don't have any finals, but it's been a pretty surreal experience. I mean, a lot of like praise from the community. Everyone's been really nice to us, and you know, cheering us on, and getting a lot of text messages and. You know, DMs on Instagram. It's just a nice feeling to have everybody behind us. Even without a final, I think you go back to the school just to get some adulation, right? Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe here and there I might show up again, but I don't know. Uh, has the community been behind you guys? Have you felt that support from from the town and, and, and all the people in the area? 120. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've, I've gotten over 150 messages Texts, emails, calls. I was at the uh, throughout, hospital today. You know, People ever since Friday night. So, yeah. uh, and then we had a, a a escort, police escort, fire engines, and all that that, that night. So, um, Wait. even though it was eleven fifteen at night, I think <laughs> we got the message that we some somebody won something. So. <laughs> Yeah, guys, where, when you're rolling back into town, uh, where do those fire trucks and police cars pick you up? And, and what was that like for you when you first see those? Joe, uh, you want to well, answer? Uh, it was, it was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy experience. Um, they picked us off at the end of the highway. We drove down the center of town um, the whole way. There's people on the side of the road cheering for us. It was a cool experience. You know, I had that with uh, cross country, but this one uh, – blew it out of the water there was way more people there we got back to the school there was there was probably like 150 people at the school just screaming we were all we were listening to music we were, we were it was a great time oh that's dedication because that hour delay was i mean uh, you guys got out of there late you know everyone got out of there late that night um so that, yeah. that's that's some good dedication from your fans i mean i would have went to bed and be like ah, i'll talk to them on saturday <laughs> <laughs> not after 48 years of trying to get this no <laughs> we can go to bed blake what was that like playing in front of that crowd because you guys had a huge crowd there on friday night yeah obviously a lot of effort went into like getting everyone there um a lot of large teachers um obviously just promoting the game um us too and it was it was a crazy experience obviously playing in front of that many people um never played in front of that many people obviously um it's pretty surreal 
Yeah, Blake, I, I got to say, I, I'm looking back at the photos that I took from the game. And when you got the final out, you threw your hands up. You had all five hands up, all five <laughs> fingers. I'm like, where, you know, I'm looking at him like, please tell me he does number one. Please tell no, just five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what I, what the move there was. Um, I kind of so excited, I kind of threw it up, spiked my glove on the ground, and so yeah, I don't even remember what happened. Yeah. Coach, when coach, when you looked up in the crowd, you must have seen a ton of familiar faces. I think I know you had a lot of alumni there. What did it mean to you to have all that support there of, of players that you've coached over the years and seeing them at the game? Well, it was it was great to have a crowd like that. Um, I told the kids to ignore the crowd and not look up. So I can't do that. <laughs> so but so after the game, after so the game uh, I saw a lot of people that, uh, and a lot of players, they all, they all contacted me afterwards. And, uh, you know, from way back, back from the eighties, mm -hmm. uh, late seventies, uh, all the way through. So I know they were there. Um, and like I said, I saw a lot of them after the game. So it, it was a great experience to, to enjoy with them. Yeah. You know, coach, after the game, you know, you, you were excited as you get excited, you know, when you talked about the kids and, and, and this, but, you know, looking back the 40 plus years, you know, you created that program in, you know, first year, 1977. And have you had time to kind of sit and reflect of, of all that work, everything that, that, that you've done, there, you know, you are the father of having Killingworth baseball. And you, it took, uh, I would say, a little longer than you would have hoped. But have you had time to reflect on, you know, getting that championship and, and just being able to soak it all in? Yeah. Um, I told Cal the other day, you know, when I first started, I was very young, um, 24 years old. And uh, what, what I set out to do was to, uh, always produce a consistent winner. And um, that was my major goal. That's what I set out. But as the years went by and we found new ways to <laughs> uh, not win the state championship, <laughs> you know, until the sixth time, it, it, uh, uh, it, it does one thing that I'm relieved about. And that is you, people start stopping asking a question. When do you think you're going to get it? Mm -hmm. You know, this is uh, the year. You know, this is, is the this year. the year? Is you know, you think you think this is the one? And uh, you know, I mean, it's it's too hard to keep telling people, you know, that that uh, I'm here for the kids. Uh, I want them to be successful, and uh, you know, it, you have to be so good just to get into this championship game mm -hmm. um, that you know. Uh, I feel good about what we've done in all the years prior to this one also. And you talk about a consistent winner. You're only losing record. I believe was that first season. I mean, in some ways that's yeah. even, that's even harder to do than a, than the one in randomness of a one and done baseball tournament. Yeah. I, I think that's probably the most, the, the thing that I'm most proud of. Um, you know, we failed to make it at 77. Uh, you had to be 500 or better back then weren't they just sophomores too we were eight and ten we had no senior class so uh you know deck was stacked against us but you know we felt we were ready to start playing varsity baseball so uh, you know do you, do, do you look back on that season and be like you know there were two games there that we could have had <laughs> I, I you know i'd have to look it up i think you probably because i can't that. remember that. <laughs> You know, for the players, um, this is a – it's a long history. It's a storied history of success. Your names will go into the record book of being the team that won this first championship, and that's something that's never going to be forgotten as long as Adam Killingworth is a school. I mean, what does that, I guess, mean for you guys? Have you guys had time to think about that? And obviously you don't want to look too far in the future, but when you guys go back for your reunions and stuff and, and you see that banner up there that says 2023 – you know, it's it's a special group, uh, obviously. But have you had time to kind of think about maybe the history that that this group made? Um, yeah, like we like our assistant coach, Coach Frazier, actually talked to us about it like a little bit into the tournament. Like he started saying us, he pulled us aside and said, 
like, listen, if you guys get this for coaches, like, you guys are going to be gods in this town. Like, you're going to stand so much higher than everybody else. Like, I hope you understand that. Like, you guys have such a great opportunity with such a great group. And like you said, like, this this team is, like, it was it was a great experience to, like, do it with our boys and, like, kids I've been playing with since I was a little kid. So, like, to do it with this group is, like, something better. Yeah, where, what what do you guys come up through when you're playing? And were, and were you guys all together through whatever, Little League or Kyle Ripken? Yeah, we, it's broken into uh, Haddam Little League and Killingworth. It's now combined as HK Little League, but I grew up playing Haddam, and you guys played Killingworth. Yeah, we played Killingworth. <laughs> Big rivalry there. <laughs> yeah, we were always on top. <laughs> <laughs> but it, those feeder programs must be pretty good if, you, if you're having that level of success at the high school level, Coach. Do you see that coming? the kids coming up ready to play? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, the a, everybody's involved in – every one of my players is involved in some kind of baseball summer and fall. So, uh, you know, the AAU programs, little leagues, um, my wife and I go out and see probably 50 to 70 games every summer and fall. So I try to follow the kids, uh, make them, you know, understand that, uh, we're there for them and supporting them and, uh, that we look forward to seeing them in the spring. So uh, we, we try to make it as much of a family as possible, you know, in, within the baseball realm. So we, so Blake, we so Blake and Joe, you had to face Kalen in, uh, in Little League? Uh, yeah, I actually uh, – I faced him every year because we're the same age. And um, <laughs> it just was not really a fun experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> He was that tall. I'll never forget. Um, uh, we played him, and I was never a pitcher, but I went into pitch. And um, back in Little League, it was like insane to like hit like a double. I mean, Callan probably hit one that went like it felt like 400 feet. It felt like the ball was never gonna land. I threw him a fastball, and it had the ball. I never saw the ball again. <laughs> it was in the river. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, Blake. Obviously, you know you're you're gonna be back. Um, you know, what, I guess, not to look too far ahead, but what can we expect now from this, you know, program, won your first title, you have, you know, a handful of kids that are graduating, you know, con con contributors, and now, you know, your class is now the senior class, and, you know, obviously, you were a leader this year, but now with that experience being, you know, the senior on this team, uh, what can we expect from, from this program? Not to put too much pressure on. Right, right. Yeah, obviously we're losing a, 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 a bunch of significant players, but um, we still have a bunch of significant players. Um, I mean, the junior class, we're, we're a very tight-knit like group, and we all have been playing baseball forever um, together. And, uh, I mean, I don't want to say we want to win at all, but it was such a good feeling. I just want to do it again. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cut that little clip. HK uh, <laughs> says they're gonna win back to back. Now, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough back to back. You know, but, but Blake, like, oh, oh, what did you learn playing? You know, with um, with Joe and 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 Cal that you're gonna be able to now, you know, do next year as you know a senior. Yeah, um, lead by example. Um, that's that's one of like a. A good quote that I think Cal told me, lead by example. And here's the thing, it's like be the example. So lead by example. Um, just lead by obviously like showing people like what to do, um, instead of like telling them, um, and like build a community in the team rather than like yeah. separation, because we've had that in the past years. That's key. Yep. You know, this so you have the hour delay. I know Coach said he was getting a little, a uh, little anxious uh, with that forty-five minute delay. But what were you guys doing to, you know, stay focused? Because it wasn't just like a delay; it was pouring, and then there was lightning. It's like they wouldn't let you guys leave the dugout. So, like, what were you guys doing to stay loose, not get too tight, not overthink? Um, I think the rain. Like, I, I took it as a sign of patience. Like most patient teams, going to win that game. So I think we were kind of just like waiting our turn. Uh, obviously, keeping our legs ready in the dugout, trying to get us, get out of the dugout as much as we possibly can until we get kicked back out. Um, but we just took it as a sign of patience. We did our thing. We went out. We were able to warm up again. They gave us a lot of time. Palmer Field did a good job of, like, you know, giving us updates on timing. They're keeping the field nice. So I think it was really just patience. And the rainbow helped. 
Yeah, the rainbow helps too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did it take a little time for you to settle in, though? I mean, it seemed like, you know, by the third inning, you guys were feeling a little better than you were in the first inning. Did, did you feel that in the game? Yeah. I mean, first two, obviously, like, uh, two runs from Coventry was, you know, they came out swinging. We knew they were going to be competitive. Like, they wouldn't be there if they weren't competitive. So, I think once we got our bearings, though, and, like, we put up our own couple runs, like, it was, you know, it was just all from there. Like, we, we knew. Yeah, you know, coach, you now are at 743 career wins, which is the second most in state history. Um, I did a little math. Um, you are 193 wins away from tying the record set by Bob DeMeo, who just retired last season. Uh, do you got 194 wins in you, coach? <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, I, I still feel good. <laughs> I feel good. I want to do it next year. Uh, but beyond that, you know, I'm not, Come on, Cole. I'll just we're go gonna, year by year. We're you know? going past Bob. Now my, my <laughs> wife, All right, that's what I hear. Going past Bob. We're not stopping. <laughs> my wife has a different opinion. About yes, I do. <laughs> Bob made it tough. I mean, gets he stuck around a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's a legend, and uh, it it would be tough for anybody to to break that. I think. I mean, look, yeah. just 19 wins over the next 10 seasons, and you're there. You win a little like, bit more than 19 every year. We can knock it down, flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can have these guys. Yeah, it's quite a hurdle for sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. It, it is. But, you know, what have you learned, coach? You know, obviously, like I said, the program started in 1976. 77 was the first varsity year. Um, you know, what has been the biggest difference for you in terms of coaching then and now? Good question. You know, a lot of things have happened, obviously, um, you know, from from the type of bat you use. <laughs> we started with wood. Uh, yeah. you know, aluminum was just starting to come in. Um, and then when it came in, it came in, you know, with, uh, you know, the first aluminum bats were like, uh, you know, that you could, you could hit the ball a mile. I mean, there were no restrictions uh, on them. And, uh, so it was tough to pitch to, to people with aluminum bats in their hands. Um, then you had, uh, mid eighties, you had, up till then, you didn't have any pitching restrictions. Um, so now with the pitching restrictions in the 80s through the 90s, and then lately with the cap at 110, that has changed pitching as well. So, um, you know, you could a long time ago, we could get by with two pitchers. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, that's there's no way you can now. So uh, all those things come to my mind in terms of trying to win games. Um, uh, so baseball has changed a lot. You, you have to change with it or else, uh, you know, you get left out. So, yeah, I think we can do a good job of that. Yeah, well, I mean, the game has definitely changed even from wood to aluminum in the way that coaches strategize, right? I mean, small ball, right. it still exists, yeah. but obviously not like it was when you were using wood bats now. Instead of bunting right. a guy over, you can hit the ball over the fence and get two runs. Yeah. You know, have you, has that been uh, a smooth transition for, for you or something that maybe took a little bit of time to kind of adjust your strategies? We, we spend, and these guys will attest to it. We spend a lot of time bunting. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I want to be able to use the bunt whenever it, it's called for. And, uh, most of my guys can, can do that. So, uh, you know, that's a large part of our strategy. Uh, we just, we try to get the ball on the ground one way or another and, uh, make the defense handle it and throw it. So, uh, that's, you know, without giving away too much, I mean, that, that's, that's our main focus, <laughs> you know, advance the runners any way you can, you know. If we have speed guys, we'll steal. But, uh, you know, we like to bunt, squeeze, whatever. 
score runs. It's, it's such a huge weapon in high school baseball. So anytime we ever hear anyone speaking badly of the bunt, we're like, you know, all the teams win state championships can bunt and have their three hitters yeah. and four hitters bunt. And yeah. It just no, puts I, so much I, pressure on the defense. Through the years, I've taken a lot of heat for bunting too much. And uh, I just, you know, I've ignored that and for, for the very reason that you stated. I mean, it's effective. There's no way there's – you can't argue that, you know, yeah. it's effective. Yeah. So we're going to keep doing it. At this oh. point, they shouldn't be questioning your strategy. You got 743 wins. I mean, <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> you will be surprised. Yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't be actually. It's a sad yeah. thing. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's wild. I mean, you know, this run for you guys, um, you know, some close games, a couple of shutouts. You know, was there a moment in this tournament where maybe it like clicked for you guys like, hey, we can do something pretty special here? I mean, you know, four three against Immaculate. You know, that's a close game, obviously. Old Lime, who's in your conference. Uh, and then you play Lyman Memorial, who I don't think you guys have ever seen, uh, because they're up in the ECC. But was there a moment during this run where you guys were like, Hey, like we're playing our best baseball r- right r- right now? I, I wouldn't want to play us. Uh, yeah, I would say, um, maybe the, I think the base game for us was the immaculate game because, uh, we pulled off that win and everyone, the the team was as together as it was going to get and as together as we were going to be. Um, we knew after that one, we had, we had to keep going. We had a live memorial, then obviously Coventry, um, had to keep winning and we did. So <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> You guys had a long winning streak to start the season. Then you dropped a few games. What did you take from those losses? Was there anything valuable in there that that you kind of said to yourselves internally? Yeah, definitely. Um, We started off 13, 13 and 0, and then we lost the three in a row. And uh, we kind of, we kind of saw that as like a learning experience. And like, that was going to be, we weren't going to want to feel that feeling again, especially coming towards the end of the season. Because after the 13th, it's like you're you're close to the end. You're close to playoffs and stuff. So um, we we got those three losses, and we were like, we're not going to feel this down the road, so let's get it out of our system now. Keep playing good baseball, and we're going to win. So Yeah, we stayed true to ourselves, and that was the biggest thing. Like, after the first loss, we was against North Brantford. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember Coach Shang, right after the game, we were about to huddle up, and we saw them celebrating like crazy out in left field, and he said to go look at that and see, like, you know, they feel like they just won the World Series after they broke your streak. So, like, just don't want to feel it again. And like Joe said, like, yeah, we just carried it in. Like, it's kind of a fire. We use it as fire to, like, you know, get us going for the next, what, well, 10 games. So. They got you one more time, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they got us yeah. one more time. Well, and then I'm you doing... run into Valley in the tournament. Uh, uh, what did you take from that game as you head into the state tournament after you didn't win the, the shoreline? Well, uh, we lost. We lost to North Brand. North Brantford knocked us out. Oh, sorry, North. Brand- so I was thinking it three uh, times. Uh, sorry, Valley. Valley <laughs> did beat us in the second game of okay. our series. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they beat us up pretty good. <laughs> so, um, what did you take from the Shoreline tournament as you started the state tournament? Anybody? I need a question. Oh uh, well, I me personally, I took um, I. I remember after that that North Brantford game getting knocked out of the tournament, I took uh, the other two outfielders and I talked to them and I was like, we need to be – because that game, for some reason, we were all down. So I, to- I told them to the side and I was like, we need to communicate. We need to, we need to realize that this is where it's going to start to get real serious. So lock back in and communicate in the outfield and we'll be just fine. Because um, I knew our outfielders are – the two that were next to me were going to make a play if the ball is coming to them. So as long as we stayed focused on the game and communicate in the outfield, tell each other how many outs there are, where to play a certain kid, we're going to be just fine. Statistically, too, go ahead. You know, one, one of the things we had to point out to the kids, too, in two or three of those losses was the fact that we were hitting too many fly balls. Mm-hmm. So uh, we hit, uh, in one of the losses, we hit 16 fly balls. So when you – Think about that, you know, with 21 outs and you're making it that easy for their defense. And so it goes back to the bunt, you know, that we were talking about. 
what we weren't doing was making them field it and throw it. So, uh, you know, we did things in practice, try to correct that. And I think that had something to do with us turning it around as well. Yeah, you gotta you have to come coach my adult softball team because we hit way yeah. too many fly balls, way yeah. too many pop ups. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I got the remedy for that. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, guys, we want to congratulate you again on an incredible season and an incredible state championship and something you guys will never forget for the rest of your lives. And I know that, you know, you guys delivering that for Coach Brooks will mean something to him for the rest of his life, too. So it's awesome for your town, awesome for your school and, and just a great, great experience for all of you. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us. And then in, uh, in, in 10 years, Coach, we'll have you back on when you pass Bob. Thank you guys so much. We are joined now by Nanawag's state championship assistant coach Kyle Brennan and players Matt Palumbo and Dylan Chung. Guys, welcome to High and Tight. Thank you for having us. Yep. Thank you. Uh, what's the last couple of days been like for you guys? Uh, Dylan, we'll start with you. What's it been like going back to school and kind of soaking in the state championship? Yeah, it, it's been great. Definitely uh, a lot of people are coming up to us, congratulating us. A lot of the teachers are saying, you know, great job. Because uh, all the whole week before they were telling us, like, go get them, bring one home for us. And we finally, we got it done. So we're just getting a lot of congratulations. The first Berkshire League team since 2008 to win a state baseball championship. Um, I'm a big Berkshire League fan for uh, a lot of reasons that I've mentioned on the show. I've covered Berkshire League teams getting to the finals and not being able to get over the hump. You know, what is it about this group that, uh, you know, obviously was special to get here, to come back in the final? You know, you beat some pretty good teams to get here. Uh, to get there and then, you know, to be able to do it and have this special mark in history, not only in Nanawag, but also in the Berkshire League. You want this one? Go you can have it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, Pete, I know all about your <laughs> back when you started up in Torrington, back when you first got here. So you've been trumpeting, uh, trumpeting the league for a long time. And uh, actually, Jimmy Alberto, who, uh, you know, he's been here, uh, I think he was here a couple years before me as an assistant. And then, uh, you know, we kind of took on the, the co-head coaching role um, about halfway through the year. But, you know, he had the experience winning it at Thomaston back in 2008 as an assistant coach. And he had been in in a couple finals. And uh, and so that experience from him, like, you know, when it, it's just he, he knows everybody from the area and he knows just how special it is uh, to win in a small league. And um, listen, there's pros and cons to being in in the Berkshire League. Like there are some really good baseball teams here. Like Northwest is always in the late rounds, and every time we play them is is a dogfight. And and they're probably I, mean, I think these guys would agree. We got our butts kicked by them yeah. late in the season, like fifteen to three yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that we win this without that game. No. No. Um, I don't know how much these guys want to talk about what happened in the locker room after the game, which usually, you know, baseball teams don't go to locker room after the game much. <laughs> we went to the locker room after that one and uh, we didn't lose since. So, so what can you, uh, you know, in a family friendly podcast, <laughs> tell us what's said in that locker room, Matt. Um, you said that if you don't step it up now, then we are not going to do a run in the, in the States. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> The game was lackadaisical, and for to put it in comparison, I I had a lot of the same feeling for the Northwestern game to the Wolka game, the the finals. We came out really flat footed, especially for a state championship, and we just got it brought to us in the first inning, and we were just really flat footed. But during that game, we kind of stepped it up. I mean, obviously we stepped it up in the third inning, but the Northwestern game we just didn't. We just let it happen, and there's no fight. But that game really helped us, and it let us know that if we don't come with energy and we don't keep the energy throughout the entire game, then we are just going to lose to the good teams. That's 100%. Did anyone say anything in the dugout as you were heading after those first couple innings? In the Wolka game? Yeah, in the Wolka game. Um, yeah, it was kind of like, I mean, don't get down, because we kind of adopted the saying, so what? 
Um, and it really helped because if you make a bad play, you know, if you shell it as a pitcher, it's going to say, so what? You're going to hit. You got to make the next play. Um, and it was, instead of solemnness in the dugout, it was more of, you know, cheering and cheering for your teammates, um, everyone talking. It was a good environment, even though we were down five. Yeah. Was Dylan, a- you got the ball then. I mean, what do you? what's your philosophy coming in as a pitcher in that point when you guys are down? What are you trying to do? Yeah, uh, just just throw strikes, get outs. Our defense has been amazing through this state tournament run. I mean, we we practically had no errors. I mean, our our defense has been amazing, and our bats have been even better. And I know I kind of I just had a feeling that we were going to hit. I never I never um, felt like we were going to get shut out or anything like that. We're a great hitting team, and defensively, if I just throw strikes and get the balls in play, our defense is going to make the play. We have great players all around, so I just knew. Um, yeah, if we just throw strikes, get the ball in play, we're going to get the outs. Yeah, and it seems like it was contagious. I mean, 10 runs were the most runs scored that, that, that weekend. Eight runs was the second most runs scored that weekend. Uh, it just seems like it was one of those games where whoever was going to hit last was going to win. Um, how do you guys stay? You know, you put up eight in the third inning. Now you're in control, but you also don't want to, you know, like you know Matt said, like be flat-footed again. So, well, you know, you score eight, 11 guys go to the plate in the third. What is the, you know, what's the thought process, Dylan, when you're going back out there in the fourth to say, I have to throw up a zero. There's nothing better to, sl- you know what I mean? After putting up eight, throw up a zero and move on. You know, what, what, was there like a little pressure in that inning? Once you guys are up, like, okay, let's not give it back now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt, Matt actually came up to me. He's like, and he comes up to us right before every inning. He's like, this is the inning that we have to step up. And he was telling us, like, if we stop him here, like, it's going to be our game to win. If we stop him here and we don't let him come back and we just get a one, two, three inning and we get right back in there, that's going to kill their momentum. They'll have nothing and we'll have we'll have every bit of momentum. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure that that's what happened. And just after that, after that third inning to come out and then just put a put a zero on the board for them, that was that was good. That definitely killed the momentum for them. Absolutely. I mean, this is a Wolkid team that had quite an interesting run to the finals. Obviously, you guys are focused on you and getting to the finals, but I mean, they won Mm -hmm. every game in their last at bat. They had two walk offs and here they are coming up to the plate down two and runners on. And I'll tell you, there was a lot of I was on the Wolkid side. Uh, Kyle saw me. Coach saw me uh, on the other side. That's where I could shoot photos. And they were like, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. I'm sitting there. I'm like, are they actually going to do this? Uh, were you guys feeling a little bit of that in the last inning with, hey, they've done this four times already in this tournament? Yeah. And nerves, you know, especially you behind the plate, Matt. I mean, I, I I caught my entire life. You're kind of like there feeling everything. Yeah. I didn't catch an ounce last year because um, we had obviously Braden Purser catching yep. second. And during the the postseason, I really started feeling the nerves again. I'm like, wow, this is this is this is the nerves. And the last game, we, I mean, Nick Rose came in and he was only throwing curveballs. I mean, my coach, Coach Jimmy, he made him throw every single curveball. I think through maybe one fastball. And I mean, I was doing very good blocking the entire um, stage front. And I was like, dude, if I just get one slip up, if one of these balls takes a bad hop, then it's second and third. And one, I don't know, one ball to second base, they score a run, error, they score two, the game's all tied up. And I wasn't so much thinking about, oh, wow, they've done this every single time because you're so in the zone at that moment. Yeah. But now that I look back and I'm like, yeah, that's that could have happened. They do every single time, and that was definitely a possibility. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of room behind you there at Palmer Field oh, yeah. when the ball gets past you, right? I mean, that's yeah, always well, a concern. It did get passed in the, in the sixth inning when we go <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you know what? It's I just the reason that we won the state championship is because this team, after that last loss in the regular season, became such a mentally tough baseball team. Um, you know, we we really did adopt the idea of so what. Um, and it's just this quick little refresher of whatever ball three, who cares? So what? You know, made an error, grounded out, whatever. So what? Next thing. Um, and we got bounced in the first round of the state tournament last year as the number one seed. And I would attribute some of that to not being the mentally toughest ball ball team. And if we had played that state championship game against Wolkett in April, we lose that game 12 to nothing once we go out on five nothing. Um, and it's a testament to, we had nine seniors in the dugout, seven starters. Um, 
And these guys, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a project to get them, get them there. But when the, when they bought into that idea of, so what, and let's win this inning, um, instead of putting too much in front of you, it's, it made such a big difference. I mean, you know, they were, they were ready to go every round. We were so well prepared and it was so little adversity. So what next thing? And, you know, everyone's kind of been talking about, oh man, we were so all the fans and our athletic director, uh, five, nothing, uh, we're, we're screwed. We got to call the restaurant afterwards to cancel the party. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, I was like, okay, I know we're going to put up the crooked number and know we were putting up heat in an inning. Um, yeah. but I knew we were going to hit, it was just, can we stop the bleeding? And, and mm-hmm. Dylan, Dylan put his all out. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Nick who got huge wins for us, you yeah. know, he pitched an absolute gem in the quarterfinal against Killingly. Um, I think two hitter or three hitter. Uh, he had like 19 strikeouts the entire tournament. Yeah, like, he so was he awesome. Really well. And uh, and I, we had full confidence in him, uh, even if they might not have admitted it in the moment. Uh, I, I he was going to get the job done. So yeah, you know, a lot of mental toughness there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I know Declan like moved around after the five runs. Yeah, yeah, so I'm in the I'm in the first base coach director. Yeah, he had. I'm a- in the first base coach's box in the bottom of the third inning, and I look out to right field, and our athletic director has gone from our section on the third baseline and walked out to the foul pole. I'm like, this dude just – he's quitting on us right now. <laughs> and no, to he's his just credit – trying to change the vibes. There's to his credit, vibes only. Yeah, to his credit, we scored eight runs, and he stayed out in right field the entire game. And if you look, one of the videos has <laughs> him trotting in like a bullpen pitcher from right field. <laughs> you can see him in his white vineyard vine. His linen. He was all yeah. decked out in linen. <laughs> With his giant soup ladle. Can you guys tell us about the soup ladle? Oh man, oh, yeah, a spoon, oh, the God. spoon. Sorry, we threw that in the air. Yeah, I got launched at the end. In the no, air. Did you guys that's... have that all year? What What is that thing? That's uh right. that's like a not a walk thing. It's not even just a baseball thing. Like he, it, it's definitely bigger than basketball games. You bring it, you slam it. They don't like that you slam it, but yeah, no. it, yeah. It, <laughs> it, 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 the pep rallies and stuff too. But yeah, that's that's just like a non walk sports thing. It's like it's token the spoon. of cool sports. Yeah, it's the spoon, and we brought it to the uh, the baseball game. It was at the last two baseball games, and you know, it's just it's just the spoon. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the spoon. <laughs> How well, much that- did the adversity that you guys went through during the season? Obviously, you, you had a coach, uh, you know, coaching change in the middle of the year. How much did that help you as you were in the state tournament, having gone through adversity during the year? Yeah. Um. um yeah, oh, I, I got it. Okay. Yeah. I've been coached by Frank for a long time. Um, he was my coach for summer ball for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And he's coached my brother when he played Nanawag like seven years ago. And I just known the guy for a long time. And when he left, it was it was a shock. I mean, it's out of nowhere. Um, but we obviously had another good coach. Mr. Brennan stepped up. Um, and I think it definitely helped us in the state tournament because, you know, when you lose a coach, it's your figure. It's someone that runs you. It, he coaches you. When you lose someone like that, it's kind of like, all right. I mean, now it's on kind of on you a little bit. And for us to lose a coach and still keep getting better as a team. So we definitely got better as a team yeah. from, you know, April, I think when he left to the last game of the year, we got way better. And I think it kind of just like, oh, we're missing this point. I don't know, kind of fix this in your swing. We don't really have that extra person to be there. So it's kind of just mental adjustments every single time when you don't have a coach there or you're missing a coach that you had for a while. Yeah. Kyle, did you see the seniors at that point step up? Yeah. um, These guys were – I mean, it was such – like, it's been weird the last couple weeks because – you know, I, I kind of kept it under the hat of what was going on. It was like, hey, yeah, I lost a coach, but, you know, business as usual. And then as we were starting to make a run, you know, friends and family and, and people around the school start to pick up. Um, and, you know, they're turning around to try to give me some of the credit. But, like, I didn't – I'm not the best baseball coach going. Like, we're not some miracle worker. It was these guys – are such good ball players. Like good players make good coaches. There, there is, you will never tell me any different than that. Um, it was about making sure that they were able to get to their potential mentally speaking. Um, and I think that that's the impact that at least I tried to have over the last six or eight weeks. Um, and you were about to say something. Yeah. It's just speaking of adversity, I think last year we actually had a better record going into the finals. Obviously we're 19 and 0 and then we play our last game of the season and we lose uh, to Chapog. 
And then we go back and we lose another game. And I just think this year, putting tougher games on our schedule and losing some games, that helped us for the for the states because we knew what it was like to lose, what it was like to come from behind. Mm-hmm. And having to deal with that helped us a lot during, during the states. I mean, we were down against Sheehan. We were down twice against Sheehan. We were down, obviously, against um, Bethel. Um, yeah, Bethel and Wolfgang. Yeah. But, yeah, just – being able this year to to know what it's like to lose and not want to do it versus last year going 19 and 0 and then having all that confidence but really not knowing what it's like to lose mm-hmm. definitely this year was we were definitely just a better team this year yeah. and that's that's kind of something that's wrong with the BL is that the only team that ever gets a hard time is Northwestern and um we obviously lost we didn't lose to them last year we beat them twice and um when you lose, when you win so much, you have no idea what it's like to be down. Mm-hmm. You have no idea what, what what the challenge is, and like what Dylan said, I think that putting the, like, the tougher games on schedule definitely got us to know like, oh, we're down, but we've we've come back from this before. It's not that big of a deal. We just got to play harder, and then you know that definitely helped us, especially in the the Sheehan game yeah. where we were down, 0-2, we came back. We were down four two, and we came back, and then we won the game. I think yeah. that. Definitely helped us a lot. Yeah. And I didn't look and I didn't write a story. About. I didn't write a story about you guys this year, so I didn't jinx you. Yeah, I appreciate that, by the way. <laughs> but like if you look at our non-conference, go find me some other team that went and played a state champ, a state semifinalist, and two state quarterfinalists as their four non-conference games. Like, yeah, that worked out well for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out well. I mean, Southington, we played the second game of the year, and That's this true. guy missed the game because he split his lip open on an outfield collision. Um, and so we played Southington without our starting catcher and it kind of snowballed. And Dude, you know, as a former catcher, man, at practice, you wear the shins, you stay within the first 90 feet of the field. I was like, playing oh, second. We uh, let him play second base of that first game yeah. against Litchfield and should yeah. have. And I just bust my face open. But yeah, <laughs> as it went on, I mean, Brookfield, you know, we they're obviously state champ, awesome team. And that was probably the best game we played yeah. um, up oh, until yeah. probably the St. Joe's game. We um, hit a lot that game. Just hit a ton. And so those games really developed confidence. So um, mm-hmm. everything happened for a reason this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, I mean, even the St. Joe's game, I mean, I said it on this show, you know, having a Catholic school in that in the smaller divisions is something I am not a fan of. Um, I know a lot of people aren't, but I mean, you guys looked at someone on someone on Twitter was like, "Oh, the FCA reigns supreme," and it was like, "Hey, the Berkshire League, uh, you know, top seed of the Berkshire League just took down the top seed of the FCA." So I don't know about that. So again, as a BL lover, that was I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> this guy, this guy came up. I mean, he was so good that game. Like we were really well prepared. Um, I'll say that about these guys went and won the games, but I think we as coaches, Jimmy and I tried to just be as prepared as we could. And I think they drew confidence from how well prepared that we were going to be. Mm-hmm. We had a really good game plan to go against St. Joe's. Uh, that's why we picked Dylan to start the game. We thought that uh, his slider would work really well against them being aggressive early in at bats. Um, and it helped playing at Muzzy Field, get a few extra feet in the outfield because they definitely stretched the ballpark a little bit. Um but you know what? To win a state championship, and I've heard from coaches that I used to coach with and, and play with and everything, win a state championship, you have to be really good, and you also have to be pretty lucky along the way um, in baseball. Like, baseball is the hardest state championship to win. Like, you guys, we've, we've covered them all. I put myself in that category. Yep. Football, a lot of times you get the best team. Basketball, you get the best team or two usually. Uh, most sports is like that. Baseball, sometimes it just – just breaks the right way. And um, and so that's why this one, I think, knowing what I know, the whole kind of uh, the framing of it is why this is so special um, because of that. And, you know, I started teaching here four years ago when these guys are freshmen. That are my very first class in this school, this guy is in my advisory class, first period. Um, and so to finish this with, with the nine guys um, that I started, you know, you know, I was doing the sports writing thing and it's like, what the hell am I doing? And I came here and I think I I made a good decision with these guys. So. Yeah, I think you just created a new pipeline because you and I started <laughs> the same year or a year apart. Yeah. In Torrington and Waterbury together. And now maybe maybe this is my new route. Maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll, hey, we'll find you. A, yeah, let's find you a, a BL team to come coach. And, oh, and I think I think I could do it. I, I don't know. I don't know if I have the patience. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> 
No, hey, guys, guys was... uh, tell me about your bus ride back and the like, you had some <laughs> fire and police. So, quick story. My kid was playing at Quasi Field. Oh, and no, I get oh, there after yelling, and I, oh, some team just some team just went by screaming yeah. and yelling. All the kids came out of the dugout to look. I mean, did you guys grow up playing on that field? You must have played some yes. games there, right? Yeah, that that field. Was what was like, that bus ride like? It was. You know, it was. I mean, yeah. So I had I had my my speaker and I was playing Frank Sinatra in New York and I was playing We Are the Champions. I just kept playing those those two songs that I repeat. And then as we're coming by, like almost like Quasi, we see these two fire trucks. And then they turn on and like holy crap. And then they get in front of us and we're getting escorted and we just start going crazy. Yeah. And then it was after that, it's like every time we saw anybody, we just start screaming. Like at the first thing, we started screaming at Quasi, and then someone yells, Quasi baseball, they're having a game. And then we just look out the window, everyone goes to the left side of the bus. We throw our medals out and we just start screaming at them like state champions, let's go. Yeah. But I don't know, it was it was great, and then we and then we go through Woodbury, and um, like our parents are there in the cars, and we just start screaming at them, and they start honking with their with the signs that they made. It was yeah. it was great. It was it was so nice to have. Yeah, yeah, that support from your community has got to mean a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. especially because it's such a small town. I mean, you're in a small town, and you just brought home your first state baseball state championship in the, in the town history. And you see that a lot of people are very happy. Um, I mean, in a small town, you see a bunch of fire trucks just escorting a bus. You don't see that every single day. Yeah. And uh, it was it was something special and definitely something to remember for the rest of my life. It was it was special. Yeah, we had people just coming and talking to us, like me, me, Matt, and all. It was like me, Matt, Brett, Stu. We were all at Woodbury Pizza. Yeah. It was it's like two people came up to us, like you guys are not on baseball, right? You're in the state quarterfinal states semifinal I was like yeah he's like bring it home for us and yeah. I'm like yeah we will and then we we're at Carvel no and the same thing yeah. <laughs> that's really cool I mean that, that's that's small town stuff and that is like some of the best stuff about high school baseball when your community really gets behind you guys mm -hmm. uh yeah. Kyle I, I have a quick question for Kyle though we talk about Pete's uh cornhole all the time and you were actually there when he threw the thing into the rafters of the it was a fire department it was yeah, the so uh how Falls bad fire was department. it how bad was it really I almost think it was better than bad because it was so impressive that you could possibly get a bag stuck where he got it stuck. Like we have extension cords coming from the ceiling to plug into the fire trucks. And I've never seen anything get hung up on those except for Pete's cornhole bag. Like he threw that thing six or eight feet higher than he should have. And I have no idea to this day how it was there. Sean's got the picture somewhere. So, so I actually played cornhole the other day. Uh, still not good. Yeah, and uh, but I will say in that tournament, because the first year Sean and I played, we came in last. We didn't win a game. We didn't make the. I don't even know if you scored a point. Um, I personally probably did. not Lost the bag. Year, I mean, he lost the bag. The next year, <laughs> Kyle expanded the field, and we got in in the play-in game, and we actually <laughs> won the play-in game. That's right. <laughs> And then, and then I'm pretty sure we got shut out by the number yeah. one team in the next round. That play-in game took like three times as long as the average game because it was like everyone was watching and a bunch of washes, and then another point. It was just brutal. But hey, we started a Nanawa cornhole uh, team here yes. uh, last year, and uh, we've had these guys drop in before. I mean, they're certainly better baseball players than they were cornhole players. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, every time a cornhole continues to take off but i remember the roots of pete getting a bag stuck in the ceiling of the firehouse in vegan falls so i think i might need to make my return this fall yeah october uh, we'll make it happen on a sunday in october so you can come i think i think i'm gonna have to redeem myself uh yeah redeem <laughs> oh, uh, well, the, food, listen, guys. the food's really good so it's well worth going if anyone wants to the beacon falls uh fire department cor cornhole thing it's an awesome event food's bomb hey thanks, we, we, we need video this time that's all Deal. Um, Deal. I'll run surveillance. <laughs> but listen, guys, we want to congratulate you again. This is obviously something you'll remember for the rest of your lives. We appreciate you taking some time out of your day to come on here and talk to us and uh, enjoy your summers and, and wherever you guys end up next year, too. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank Congratulations, you. guys. And I, I love it for the Berkshire League. Thank you. Yeah. Go BL. <laughs> Go BL. <laughs> Go BL. <laughs>
state championship baseball team and their coach, Matt Hart. And there's too many kids to announce. So they're all here. I see them all with their medals on. <laughs> you guys are in a classroom. I love this. Welcome to the yeah, show, really guys. Clap it out. Congrats, guys. Congrats on winning L. Congrats on getting, you know, to the finals and, and, and winning it. I love that you're all here. I mean, I feel like I'm like, presenting something there's just so many people like <laughs> looking at me um but uh yeah i i'll jump in you know how has the last couple of days have been i mean not only getting to the finals for the first time but winning and you know coach we'll start with you you played here you played for brookfield yeah. you were on a team yeah. that didn't get to a final and win a final and now you know Not you you have uh led the program to their first title yeah um i think that for me personally makes it that much more special because being an alumni from here um playing here just it, it just makes it so much more hits home for me better that you know i've grew up in brookfield from here to be able to give this back and have these guys earn it to get it for brookfield um really really hits home it's awesome who's there is tanner there where's tanner wall is he there Tanner's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Tanner, what was it? What was that like? What are the last you know few days been like for you guys heading back to school and seeing your friends and and all that uh, stuff? It's been it's been pretty great, you know. I got all like we just did our grad walk today, so I got all the teachers coming up to me congratulating me. So it's just it's good to get that recognition for the program too, not just for me, but for the program. Yeah, did you guys all grow up playing ball in in Brookfield? Is that did you come up through the Cal Ripken system and everything? Yeah, I, everybody. I think. Everybody here came up playing Brookfield Little League. Everybody here is from Brookfield, so it's just great. Did you guys get a police escort or fireman back into town? Yeah, we did. Our <laughs> coaches surprised us with a nice, probably like four or five fire fire trucks. It was it was, it was awesome. Oh, it was awesome. great. Uh, Pete, Steve said he'll, he'll send you the video. Oh, I uh, love it. The video of the fire. Cool. <laughs> love it, love it. I mean, guys, look this. You guys had a great season last year. I think a lot of hype surrounded you guys. Maybe not as much hype this season, but you guys were able to to get through. You know, what what was different maybe between did you guys learn something from last year's group to help you get over here or, or what 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 made this group special? Uh for me, I think these guys will agree is the, the chemistry. Uh this team how, how often a week did you guys like, go out to eat and do stuff together and just yeah. stay together? Yeah, all the time? a lot of money. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably. yeah. So they were <laughs> constantly doing stuff together. Um, for the guys that were here last year, most of, a lot of this group went on the floor trips. Actually, the couple freshmen were there too for their their, their sisters. <laughs> so they were all on that, that floor trip last year. So I think that started that chemistry. Um, and then going into this year, I think that was the biggest difference that we picked each other up more so than years past and uh we're able to, to feed off of each other because they're such good friends off the field as well i mean you, guys you had a great. couple you yeah, had a yeah. couple games there yeah. it was like yeah. southington massic you, you lose a couple in a row but after that you guys really started to click was there something that happened with the team or was it just you started playing better or what was yeah, it there you guys cricket step into if you want but i i would say that for those losses we they were just we were able to learn from them. Um, we talked about it. I know I, I talked about it with the, the, the captains here afterwards. It's like, none of us were down after the loss. Like, we just took it. All right, this is what we need to do better. Uh, this is what we did wrong in this game. So, this is how we can do better at doing that. And even if it didn't work right away, it's just, you know, the old saying, learn from your mistakes. And I just can't, can't like let it happen again. So, we kind of use the losses as a, as a learning tool to get better for us. Guys, uh, think you could put a little respect on the SWC's name this year, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we, we, we thought the SWC was a challenger. You know, there's a lot of good teams. There's a lot of even former players. You're looking at Matt Scott pitching at Stanford. You got Billy Oldham pitching down at Southern Miss. You know, there's a lot of players that come out of SWC. Um, it is challenging. I think it is a little bit uh, disrespected in the sense that you know, maybe not as much coverage or um, or just the realization of the talent. But for for the most part, that top half of the SWC, at least the top half, is very competitive. And even this year, you had teams like uh, 
Yeah, teams like Kobe ended up beating Massick on any given day. So it's like Massick ended up being a quarterfinal team in the state finals, and they were beat by Kobe. It was, you know, so the, the whole conference in itself has a lot of talent, and it's just getting better and better. Is Casey the Casey Cats? Where is he? Right here. There he is. There you go. <laughs> I, without the uniforms and hats, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, your pitching staff was fantastic in the state tournament. What were you guys able to do to, to be so dominant on the mound, you know, game in and game out with different guys? I mean, you can definitely ask Tanner and Matt. I mean, I feel like they did a bunch of the heavy lifting. I feel like uh, they made it so easy for me because they would go five, six, even seven innings. So, I mean, I think a big thing, we just trusted them so much. Um, they were constantly so dominant and just throwing strikes. Uh, we trusted our coaches. We trusted Garrett behind the plate and most importantly, our defense. So I think these two guys, Tanner and Matt, just made it so easy for the whole team and especially myself whenever I had to come in and close. I just felt so relaxed knowing that we would get through five, six innings, giving up, you know, no runs, one run, two runs. So they made it really easy for us, I think. Well, Casey, you, you seem to relish the moment. Runners on base in the last inning, no big deal. Get the out. I mean, what what is going through your mind at that? Because it happened in the semis. You know, you got the final out, and I mean, I have more photos of you celebrating on the mound than any other player <laughs> this year. Um, you know, but what goes through your moment at those? You know, the end of the game, game on the line, season on the line. It doesn't seem like you you were phased either time. No, I mean, I definitely heard all of it. It was it almost felt fake. I mean, it was so loud. And being the person on the mound, I mean, I did expect it going into the game. That's one of the things uh, that I was preparing for mentally. I knew that I could be put in a spot like that. I mean, what like what else could I ask for to end my career of being a senior on the mound with the bases loaded 3-2 with the state championship? I mean, I felt like a little kid, honestly, like in the backyard. Um, but it was awesome. Definitely nervous, but I also knew um, I trusted myself and I trusted the team. So I felt good and confident. Yeah, I, I, I was nervous watching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is, is Christian there? I, I need to have a little word with Christian. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Million? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just for the record, I read every single comment that goes on our uh, Instagram page. <laughs> uh, no, no, we did not. We we both picked. Um, we both picked Guilford to win. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you were right. I just wanted to give you a little <laughs> credit there. Um, but uh, I hope – this is what I tell teams that when we pick against them and end up winning. I, I hope it, it helped motivate you. Uh, that's why I could take little like 2% helping motivate the team. <laughs> Did it, Christian? Yeah. Uh, we, we went into the game, and we had like no pressure because we were picked against – like, <laughs> no pressure. No. Pressure. I just. I loved it though. I saw that and I was like, when we get them on the pod, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> find Christian. <laughs> nah, we 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 love it. Um, you know, Steve, Steve Baldwin, your athletic director. I, I've known him for a really long time, and he's very big into high school baseball. And he had his little spot at each game. And you know, I asked him. I said, you know, he Steve has given out a lot of championship trophies over his years including I think he gave one to his nephew and, you know, all that. But seeing him hand that trophy over to you, Co Co Coach Hart, might have been one of the best moments of this weekend. How cool was it getting the trophy? You know, obviously he's your boss, he's your AD, but, you know, he also, like, has trust and faith in you to lead this program, and he was, yeah. able, was able to give you that trophy. Absolutely. You know, he gave me this opportunity. Um, and he knows he's he's very easy on me. You know, doesn't really ever yell, raise his voice ever to me or <laughs> too much. So that was a very easy transaction there. No, but uh, for real, he he gave me this opportunity. Um, him and actually uh, the predecessor here, uh, Coach Muller, um, took me on. I think it was eight years ago or nine years ago. Now, where I was the freshman coach, I was a JV coach, assistant varsity, and then you know moved into this role. So it was special. Um, yeah, <laughs> my first year was the, the COVID year, so I was undefeated that year, too. That was nice. <laughs> uh, but to, to, to come all the way through and to have, you know, a, a guy like Mr. Baldwin here for the majority of that time um, was nice. It was awesome to have him there with us and celebrate. I think I made it better. Yeah, that's better. Um, but uh, being such a big baseball guy himself, too, it was cool 
that he was there and able to to hand that over to us. Yeah, it was that that, that was very that was very cool to see. Coach, what are some of the things that you're doing to kind of keep sustain this and make it a program and not just a you know a one and done thing? So when the younger guys who are in the back of that room right now are mm-hmm. are going to come up, that you had the same opportunities. Well, I mean, as you noticed, you guys commented on it too, is that we have a lot of young guys that play. Yeah, you know, they're here playing, they're getting their experience even throughout the year. Maybe the guys that weren't on the field in the championship game necessarily they they were there getting their experience and they got us here. You know, a lot of those young guys learned from it this year. Uh, and in years past, uh, the guys that have stepped up this year, the older guys are, were were part of it. My first year here, they were they were here. They were playing. They were pitching. Tanner was getting innings in as a sophomore. You know, big spots. He had a couple big spots as a junior. Um, Casey also big spots as juniors. Jack Graham played his junior year too in the field. You know, like a lot of these guys had experience getting us here. So I think that's been a huge thing for us. Is the young guys being able to step up throughout the season to get that experience. Uh, So when we get into a big spot or a situation that they've, you know, been there before. So, you know, this game against Guilford, and I'll tell you, someone who was there since 8.45 in the morning, Saturday was a very long day. And, (laughs) you know, that double L game went to extra. The M game had 18 runs scored. And then you guys start, and all of a sudden, the first, like, five innings fly by, and it's zeros across the board. Mm -hmm. Not desperate, but, you know, at what point were you sitting there like, we need to just get one. Like, we just need to be able to scrap one run across, and I think we got it. So, you may think lying, whatever. I just, I I knew that was how the game was going to go, right? We've had so many of those games throughout the year. We had the 1-0, 2-1, 2-0 games. Uh, So, I, I think it was in between the fifth and the sixth inning. I talked to the guys, and I'm like, we've been here before, right? We've been here before. We've done this. We're ready for this. Just get us one or two, and we are pitching. We're so, we're like Casey said earlier, we're so uh, confident in our pitching staff that if we get a couple runs, one or two, we're 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 in a good spot. We're in good shape. So and I then you, the and then you, we had those games earlier yeah. throughout the year, the Danbury game, uh, the Barlow game. We had a bunch of those games where we were just preparing it for us for now. And then you get the one, and then you're like, you know what? Let me drop one down. Let me get that <laughs> second one. Let me yeah, get it. Was kind of, you know. was kind of <laughs> that was that was a beauty. Look, as someone whose high school baseball career was limited to two years, and I just spent all the time bunting because I couldn't <laughs> get a lick. I was there. That was a beautiful bunt. And there was yeah. a, this weekend. There were some good bunts. There were some not good bunts. But I've never seen someone as excited of getting a bunt down than when you ran back from first base. That was awesome and just great bunt. <laughs> Thank you. How much you guys work on? I, I have seen one more guy just, almost just as excited. There's a sack bunt earlier in the game where he came in just the bunt and he walked off the field like he just hit the grand slam. <laughs> he had an awesome bunt too. <laughs> I just saw that. He, he got that. It was just an awesome sack bunt and he came off the field like. Oh, the I love I love bunts. I'm a, again, that was my whole career was just bunting because I couldn't hit. <laughs> no, we, we talked about it throughout the year, especially over the year coming into this this season, that our identity was going to be our our pitching, our defense, in small ball. So where we had practice early on, where we just sat in the cage against the machine, where we were just all practice bunting. We knew that was going to what it was going to come down to. And sure enough, we talked about the two strike hitting. And bunting and end up being the two things that, that got us the runs and got us the win. Absolutely. Obviously, Coach, how, Coach, how much did your out of conference schedule help? You had Nanawa, Southington, mm-hmm. Danbury. I mean, those are some really high Absolutely. quality programs that you played. Absolutely. Is that done yeah. to get you guys ready for states? That's again, hats off to Mr. Baldwin and helping and getting that done with his experience. Um we we love playing those teams. Last year we started our year off playing Daniel Hand, the the runner or the the state champ, so coming into that game. So we kind of liked how that prepared us for last year. So we kind of copied that going into this year as well, playing Southington. Um, Danbury is an excellent team in the program. Uh, like you said, uh, not a lot. We played a lot of these teams that prepare us, even if we don't lose. You know, if we lost, we we took that as a, as a learning curve, figure out what, what we did wrong against these great teams to get better. In most of those games, uh, we were with those teams. Uh, we, you know, eliminated a few mistakes here or there. We talked about it 
afterwards. We eliminated a few mistakes and we're hanging with some of the best teams in the state. So we were pretty confident throughout the year. Guys, we want to thank you for coming on. We want to congratulate you again. Uh, I can't even imagine how great it feels to go back into school as a state champion and ride back in with the police and fire and everything. And yeah, it's a, it's a memory you guys will have forever. And as Pete likes to point out, in 10 years or 20, when you come back for your reunion, your your banner will be up on that wall 2023, right? It's forever, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's forever. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. Thank Enjoy you. it. Thank you. Enjoy the summer. Thank, thank you, you, guys. guys. We are joined now on High and Tight by the Class Double L champion Ward baseball team, Coach Brett Connor. Guys, everyone, welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Scott and Pete. Appreciate it. Yeah, um, thanks for thanks for coming talk. back. You know, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> thank you for doing us the honor of winning a second straight title to come back on the show. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. It was uh, one heck of a season. That's for sure. Is the second one better? You know, everyone asks that question, but like, to be honest with you, I respect all the players that come through our program. So every single one is beyond meaningful. Um, I just kind of reflect on all of the um, situations, the ups, the downs, um, and how much these kids like put into this and to see them succeed. It's just, it's incredible. You know, like we, we lost five games but they're all one run games. It was like these kids, you know, I um, very much appreciative of their efforts and hard work and dedication and love for the program. And um, this was a special year with uh, everything that, that happened and, you know, only losing five games by one run, like that's incredible. So I'm really proud of them. And you played stables four times. I mean, that's <laughs> so you're sick, sick of seeing them. <laughs> I would play them every time. Um, they, you know they're going to throw their best shot at you, and that's what you work for. So, you know, it's so crazy guys, looking ahead, at – sorry to talk about the one runs. You know, you guys played – lost five one, one, one run games in your regular season. In the regular season, you didn't win one one-run game. But now you get to the playoffs, and you're a two-to-one, three-to-one, uh, two-to-one, nine-seven. Uh, you know, what did you guys learn from those losses that were able to, you know, kind of be on the other side of that come the postseason? Um, Let the kid just, uh, trust in our defense and trust in each other to get the job done. I feel like in the beginning of the season, we were still kind of like finding out who we are and like what guys are going to step up. And by the end of the season, we kind of, like Coach always said, we were battle tested. So we definitely like knew how to handle the situation. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we got in a lot of close games, especially like early on where we dropped those games early, started four and three. And uh, we kind of just learned that we need to uh, like control ourselves in those moments and uh, just trust each other, like Aaron said. You guys played as – some of you played as sophomores in the varsity. Have you ever lost a playoff game? One, yeah, yeah, yeah. Greenwich, Greenwich, sophomore year, state quarterfinal, sophomore state year. quarterfinal, sophomore year. That was your only loss. Jeez, <laughs> what did Pretty you take? It's, it's an incredible run when you're in a one and done. What do you guys do to deal with the pressure of those games? Because I mean, one thing goes wrong, and and that's it. Griffin, what do you think? I mean, I never really thought about losing like in the playoffs this year, just because it was my last year. And, like, I think back to that that loss against Greenwich uh, sophomore year and just watching all the seniors. And, you know, I, like, it was really hard to process, like, losing in the playoffs your senior year. And, like, that's how your season ends. And I just, like, I never really wanted to, like, think of that feeling. So that, that, that usually, you know, that stayed in my mind um, throughout the playoffs this year. Did you know you had a little streak going? I mean, or were you aware of that until some, or was it just when people started mentioning it this year once you got into the states? Not really. I I didn't really think of the streak we had. Um, sorry. Like, um, no, I didn't really think of it. Um, you know that that loss was definitely a tough one sophomore year, and then I think that um, you know helped us grow and grow as like a team. Just just that horrible feeling of losing in the playoffs. You know, a game that we think that we definitely should have won 
I mean, we made some some mistakes that game that I think we learned from and, um, you know, used that knowledge the past two years. Yeah, it's a it's an incredible streak. I was talking to Coach Connor yesterday and like 16, it's it's hard to do, but I did the math. So Fairfield Ward has to win the FCAC and the state title next year, then win the FCAC and win one more playoff game, and then you'll tie Amity. It's a 28-game win streak. So pressure's on for those who are coming back. <laughs> That's insane. No more, no big deal. There's 12 more, right? Yeah. yeah. Now this I'm just gonna start to count in my head. But Coach Jim, you know, I'm gonna uh, throw it to you. Um, you know, you came over to this program from Trumbull. Uh, and you know, I believe this was your first year as like the full-time varsity assistant. So what did you I guess learn when you joined, you know, this program at Ward? Um, that maybe you didn't know before you, you know, came to Fairfield Ward? I just knew the competitive spirit that Fairfield Ward brings every single game, and it's a different kind of emotion that they bring to a baseball game. So I always talk about the intangibles, and it's one thing to have talent. It's another thing to have intangibles. Um, I was blessed to know some of these kids. I coached them when they were 13, so I had a lot of former relationships with the guys you know, in high school. We played with each other um, after college baseball. So I had a very good understanding of what the program was about. I knew what Brett was about, and I knew what kind of energy his team and he brings to coaching, and I wanted to be part of it. I want to jump in on that. Um, I, I played baseball with, uh, with uh, Jimmy, and um, I've known him for quite some time. He's a shelter guy. And then – First off, before I move on, we got to get his um, internet. I, I muted him. <laughs> got to get his internet. Get his internet. Um, um, they muted Jimmy. There you go. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he brings a lot to the table. He's like having another head coach. We, you know, we only have two varsity coaches. Uh, you know, um, then I have my JB coach, Danny Cohen, or freshman coach, Dante Gallucci. But, you know, we're going up, up against a lot of programs that have four, sometimes they got five coaches. So having Jimmy um, be there with me and, you know, there's times where I can't show up to practice until three o'clock or 3.15 or 3.30 because um, I teach elementary. And, and to have a guy with his knowledge and his respect of the players and, the ability to teach, um, it, it was a home run of a year. And Jimmy Pajero is going to be a future head varsity baseball coach. Um, you know, real student, I'm sure. Um, I would hate to lose him, but, uh, you know, he is he's top notch. And I, I'm glad you guys brought him on here because um, I wanted everybody to know who Jimmy Pajero was and how solid of a, of a coach, a mentor, teacher that he is. Hey, I got a question for Will. By the way, Will is our favorite guy because he sent in the box scores all season to us, and we really appreciate that. Like, really appreciate that. Uh, but Will, you know, you kind of had to earn that spot in center field this year, and then you ran away with it. Um, what was that process like for you coming coming, you know, onto the team and, and having to get a spot and then having such a stellar season that you had? Um, yeah, it was about so like being on the team last year, being part of the success, obviously it was a lot of fun and it was really cool. And then so that kind of went into my, my motivation for the winter was I really want to be like a part of a bit, want to have a bigger role on a championship team. So I felt like <clears throat> I worked for that. And then as soon as I got my opportunity, I just took advantage of it. And luckily I kept rolling throughout the season. You guys are so modest. Uh, we have to ask them about each other. Griffin, what do you think of Will's catch in the FCAC? Uh, in the FCAC? <laughs> <laughs> he completely saved that game. Um, I mean, I I saw, you know, I saw it hit the bat and watched it go to the outfield, and I had no thought in my mind that that ball was dropping. I knew I knew that he was going to put in all the effort, you know, that he could to make that catch, and then he just lays out like Superman. Like it's nothing. Yeah. And you have a you have a lot of good defenders behind you. How does that help you as pitchers? You know, for 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 Patty and and Griff, it's a lot. It it just takes a lot of stress away from pitching. You know, I know that um, if I if my stuff's not on that day, I can just you know I can 
I, if I can't like work around hitters, um, you know, I can I can let them make contact and I can let my guys make plays behind me, and that just that that like you know that's trust. That's the trust that we have. That's what coach always talks about is trust. Um, I, I never have a doubt in my mind that you know my my guys behind me aren't going to make plays for me. So yeah, for so sure. So I talked to coach the other day about um, you know the youth program in town. How does that help you guys coming up through through the Fairfield Little League all together? You guys were all together, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what was that like as, as you play together through 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old? It kind of just uh, <clears throat> allows us to, like, form those bonds and friendships early. I mean, like you said, we've been playing together for, like, 10, 11 years. So, like, it's just, like, trusting each other and building confidence, like, through Little League, through, like, the early stages, like, middle school. Uh, travel ball stuff like that so it just it prepares us and gives us the confidence to go out and do our jobs and I know you guys go back and you help coach and help do, do clinics with these kids why is that important for you and, and for the program sure. um, it's definitely important to help out the younger guys like we did the camp earlier in the season on one of the Sundays and we got like a ton of awesome feedback from like the parents and the kids talking about how how much fun they had and how much they look up to us it just makes us feel like we're doing a lot for the town more than just playing baseball so it gives us a little bit more more pride and passion when we go out on the field and see like like in the FSEC championship game we got like little leaguers holding up signs saying like go ward and like cheering our name and stuff just makes it really cool so just really fun to take that extra level for the younger guys and just play for something more than just ourselves and coach I know that's a big one for you right that to have this sustainability of the program that you need the high school kids to be role models for the younger kids right yeah and they're absolutely tremendous um you know the kids coming up to them after games asking them for autographs um they're really making a difference within our community and um you know I think now the town is growing um, as well, you know, we first started with, you know, just our, our little small community on the Fairfield Ward side, Fairfield National side, but, you know, Fairfield American and what Lolo softball is doing, like everything's just growing and it's just a lot of positivity happening in the town of Fairfield. And it's awesome. It, you know, like, how do you not love that? Um, everywhere you go, everyone's talking about the programs and um, the success that the programs are having. And it's a testament to all these players who buy into it and want to make a difference uh, in a kid's life um, where maybe one day they're they're filling those shoes of, you know, being the next Garrett Larson or being the next Griffin Polly, Patty Galvin, Will Stilato, Will Eustace. I keep going on and on because there's a lot of great kids within our program who teach these kids. Um, younger youth players along the way and uh, they really look up to them and that was something for me as a kid uh, my mom would always bring me to Fairfield high school baseball games and basketball games and soccer games um, and I always remember the names like I don't I don't forget um, you know the players that were playing back in the 90s um, Derek Klumkowski playing basketball like I, for, I remember all that because I was a kid looking up to them, dreaming that I could be that that guy, you know, and um, it was just a cool thing. And I'm glad that it's happening within our program, with our town and these kids are buying into it and they're really good at it. So I'm proud of them. Uh, by the way, I played against Klinkowski. That kid was legit. Yeah, he did. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Schultz yeah. coached that Fairfield yeah, High team. They were 20-0 and 0 yeah. in the FCAC my yeah. senior year, yeah. I would go to uh, Dave Danko's women's basketball girls basketball games uh kelly nash was playing courtney upshaw i mean yep. they're big time names i don't forget these names and i'm guarantee i guarantee you there's a kid out there who's in little league who in 15 years 20 years from now is going to say the same thing about garrett larson or griffin polly or patty galvin or will stilato you know and many more yeah you you they made really, a difference yeah you you've really built this into a community like I said, we were talking yesterday. I mean, even your barber shop gave you a shout out on Instagram, which I had never seen before. It's like this this barber shop, and it's like, yeah, way to go, Coach Connor. And I'm like, wow, like even the like, I mean, I, when I used to get hair haircuts, you know, mm -hmm. I liked my barber shop, but like not enough that they would shout me out on Instagram. Yeah, I told you that was one of my former players, Mark Hirschbeck. Uh, his father was a major gunpire, and his uncle was John Hirschbeck, who 
Roberto Alomar spit in his face. It was like a, you know, big time, big deal. Um, he's just, uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of loyal guys who yeah. we, we look out for each other. We have fun. You walk into that barbershop, you're going to see war, a ward hat there. You're going to see other FCAC hats in there because a lot of other FCAC teams go in. So it's really cool. Like you get to go and just chop it up at the barbershop and uh, get a haircut. And it's, it's a fun time. And that's what every day should be. It should be fun and something that you look forward to going to and just socializing and being around people and enjoying every single day that you're, you know, you're on earth. So. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of haircuts, uh, Griffin, is, th- is that a mullet? <laughs> I, I, I see you without a hat right now. And uh, is that a mullet? Oh, you, don't, yeah. you don't get your haircut there, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I go to uh, actually a teammate's mom, uh, Pete Crosley's mom, Mrs. Crosley. She gives haircuts. So. Oh, yeah. And you were yeah. like, you know what? I really want a mullet. <laughs> huh? And you were like, you know what? I really I feel like I can do a mullet now. Yeah, I did it last year. And. <laughs> I mean, we won both, so I figured I should do it this year again. Well, she gave, sure. gave everyone mullets to start the year. That was a good thing. <laughs> all it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, Business up front, the- party in the back. That's all it's all about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, guys, you know, uh, you know, Garrett Griffin, you know, Patty Will, you know, that game on Saturday, you know, we got to watch it. You know, coach, I, you're, uh, both your coaches were heavily involved in it, but you guys played in that. I mean, was there any moment in that game where, you know, nerves are at an all time high or, you know, you're kind of like maybe maybe soaking in like, hey, this is a pretty good game. Like, you know, I really want to win, but we're what both of us are doing on this field right now is pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of moments throughout where we're like <clears throat> you take a look. I mean, one pitch can basically like make or break that game. So, I mean, it was kind of just like having confidence in Griff to go make pitches. And, I mean, all these guys to make plays, Garrett, Will making plays. And, obviously, a guy like Hero on the mound, you got to go in to the box and you got to battle every pitch. So, it's just about having the confidence in each other to uh, win pitches, win at-bats, and uh, just make enough plays to get that one. You know, we – Speaking of plays – well, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of plays, the two of you are here. And I don't want to give away your secrets, and maybe Brett will have to change the call next year. But what's the call on that pickoff play? Is that a verbal cue? What, what are you guys doing? We can't really. Uh, dive <laughs> I'm you guys still change. not going to give it up? Uh, if they tell you, they'll have to kill you. <laughs> it was, I'll, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'll speak on it a little bit. I won't give Okay. Much, but um, it, it, it wasn't really any, like, verbal thing. He kind of just looked at me, and, you know, I kind of we – were, we were on – Wave, wave, wavelength. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> they improvised. Yeah. There, it was just we looked at each other. I realized that he was like twenty feet off the bag. So, yeah, I think right as I made that movement, I saw him break towards the bag, and we knew we had a chance to make a play. And yeah. that was so it was it was just a timing thing, right? Yeah, yeah, timing play and uh, riff executed. So, had you done it at, at any point during the season, or was that the first one you got at third base? We've done one earlier in the season. I think it was against Stanford. Yeah. Uh, similar type thing. Griff was in a jam. And we just thought, you know, this is a good time to, like, uh, make a play, get him out uh, of, a, of a jam, basically. And uh, we're thankful it worked out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, we, I talk, love- we talk about in practice a lot, being ready for the biggest moments. Um, and they practice it and they work really hard and they trust one another and they execute. So it, it all, you know, their, their practices are a thing of beauty. You should watch the way they go about their business. It's unbelievable to watch, um, just leaders and, you know, take control of situations. I can coach Bajur and I can tell them, Hey, we're going to do this. And they just go and get it done. So, um, the, very much appreciative of their efforts and dedication to this program and uh, the leaders that they have become. Did you see that play developing from the dugout or did you know it was up or, or did you just, or did, well, after it happened, you're like, nice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Like the, we practiced it, but they, you know, they went out and did it and they, they saw the play. There's certain like situations you want to look for if he's getting off too far and they just executed it. It was all on them. That's uh, I mean, incredible. I, I just love that Garrett was like, I had no idea what 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 was happening. 
That's, that's, <laughs> I want to comment what, real quick. <clears throat> then I'm going to try to jump on a different computer. But I saw the Staples first base coach, and it looked like he was yelling to Jack to make sure the runner wasn't getting off the bag that far because he knew something was happening. And as he was yelling, I'm looking at Griffin hold his leg, and he picks the third base. And I was like, you got to be kidding me because that just that saved the game right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they were almost on they were to almost you. On to you. <laughs> uh, you know, Will, uh, that final, you know, it's the bottom of the 10th inning. It's the longest state final game since 2011 uh, in terms of innings. And that ball, I mean, I didn't see it. I watched the video because I was, I was shooting what I thought would be the eventual celebration. And uh, you did a little jump step to catch it. Uh, were you super confident in that or because like I was rewatching that. I'm like, oh, man, like what if what if maybe you jumped a little too high or, you know, just take me through that last play where like everyone's waiting for you to catch that ball. Yeah, I mean, it's every kid's dream to, to make the catch the make the final out of the state championship game. So I, I knew it was like it was a little floater to me. So I knew it wasn't that difficult of a play. So I know it was a little uh, premature celebration, but I <laughs> catch it while celebrating <laughs> yeah who, did you, uh, did you yeah. pocket the ball i did yeah yeah I good <laughs> do you have the ball i gave it to griffin uh, oh, that's nice of you that's nice of you no nah, i would have kept it made him like you know maybe give me something for it <laughs> you know uh no so who who was stuck at the bottom of that pile because that pile did not look fun i think it was like me. body wise when, I think I one went so. down in the beginning. Yeah, we were all just then, jumping around. I was trying to get people to go down. Was, yeah, I don't we know who fell, went down. We fell. I think he fell on me. And then, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, the was, last guy there gets stuck at the bottom? Yeah. Well, because I came in from the outfield, and the pile's moving towards the outfield, and it just oh. toppled over. So. <laughs> I saw sun- that. He's got to get the sunglasses off before you get on the pile. Yeah, oh, God. I, who was it? St. Saint, Saint Paul last year? I think five kids broke their sunglasses. <laughs> I mean, it's well worth it. But, yeah, well worth it. Yeah, let's be honest here. Um, but, you know, guys, it's only been a couple of days and not to put too much on. But, you know, have you guys thought about the legacy that this senior class is going to leave at Fairfield Ward? Three FCAC titles, two state titles, the first team in the history of the FCAC to win the FCAC two years in a row and then win a state title two years in a row. And it's only happened in double L once and you guys have done it twice. I mean, that's a pretty outstanding legacy. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it didn't really, it hasn't really hit me yet. I feel like it will soon. Um, You know, like the further away we go from the season, um, but no, it, it, I haven't really like thought about it. I'm sure it'll, it'll really like get to my head once we get the rings, uh, Thanksgiving, um, just like watching all our supporters, um, at the football game. And, um, I think, you know, to take it back to like the little league thing, just, you know, I think, um, the legacy that, that, um, we left here, I think it, it'll be passed down to them just for them, like, you know, watching all our success and um, how we did it, you know, we were, we were humble and you know, we had love for everyone on the team. And I think that just, that goes a long way. And uh, I think it will be passed down, you know, through generations of, of teams. So, yeah. And just, just know whenever you go back to the school for the rest of your lives, you're going to have multiple banners up there that you can point to and yeah. it'll get better every year as you yeah. get older, as you know, I'm sure coach can tell you. It'll be better to look at. Your body will feel worse, though. <laughs> yeah, but the, the memory will be more and more amazing every year. We, we do talk about, you know, 25 years from now, what it means, 50 years from now, stuff like that. Um, we've had those conversations. Um, Will's mom and uh, – uh, Jen Baylog, they take photos for our program and uh, they, you know, compile a bunch of photos throughout each game and they send it off to all of us. And, um, you know, it's just, we're talking about being appreciative of all these photos that you're going to be able to have and look back on. So you're talking about the banners, you're talking about, um, you know, all these pictures of them playing, like they're going to appreciate all that later on down the road. That's for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, this team has had some, uh, Bill Simmons used to say, you know, DVD worthy moments 
when you mm-hmm. know you watch a team's championship run and you look at that moment and you go, that's a DVD mo- moment. Now it's all streaming. Um, but before it was VHSs. Anyway, you know, you guys have had those types of moments, whether it's this year, last year. I mean, Griffin has more walk off bunts, you know, than I think I've ever seen um, big pitching performances. Garrett's home run in the quarterfinals. I mean, you know, for you guys, you know, for the guys, because if I ask coaches, she's going to say all the memories, all the moments were big. But for the four of you, if you go like one at a time, like what 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 is that DVD moment for you guys this year? where that's something that you're never going to forget. I mean, yeah, I, I got to say catching the final out in the state championship game, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So, well, that will be the opening of the, of your championship. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy one. He's got an easy one. And I think Griffin's got an easy one too, but we'll see what he says. Uh, I mean, I don't think I could even say one moment. I think just like, the final out of the FCI championship and then the state championship, just those two moments. And then like maybe the winning runs of each of those games were just like uh, really exciting to be a part of. And just like the energy uh, throughout the whole stadiums when we were scoring those runs. So uh, uh, that's mine. Um, I don't, I don't really know which one to choose from. It, it would be from this, you know, the state championship game this year. Um, but I feel like I don't I don't know. I feel like the like my last hit when I when I scored Jake just that was, cause, a, that was a pretty big one. Yeah, just because <laughs> well I, you know, I gave up the run in the seventh, which you know I could have I could have put it away earlier, um, but I had to make it interesting. You popped yeah. out. So, well, yeah. you popped out the base of the so. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 thanks. Thanks for I, pointing I, that out. Well. <laughs> So, you know, I, I kind of, um, you know, I kept our team in there, which is kind of, you know, unfortunate at the time. Um, but, yeah, just to be able to, you know, pick myself up, you know, for the team um, in the 10th and, you know, get that get that run in in the 10th to, you know, go up, go ahead against Staples. Yeah. I'm probably one on the field. I'll go with the Sellington home run. That was, like, the most – chaotic thing I think I've ever experienced on a baseball field <laughs> making contact be like oh that's gone then remembering the wind I'm like oh he caught it and then sprinting around the bases when I see the ump do the safe sign it was like the most like I don't even know what to think after that happened I was just screaming with all the boys but also <laughs> one of the moments that I'm definitely gonna remember for the rest of my life was probably after we got our medals, when Pete tapped me on the shoulder, was which way are you turning after you get the plaque? I was like, that was when it really set in that we just <laughs> accomplished that and like this is it, and we really like actually did what what we said we were gonna do in the beginning of the season. That was when it finally set in for me. It was just a really cool moment. <laughs> you guys have played in front of some cool crowds, but the energy at that double L final this year, where people are standing up when you know when there's two strikes, and have you ever been in an environment like that? that exciting and that many people? I mean, maybe the only one that compares would be last year's state championship, but it's just, yeah, yeah, that, uh, that energy at Palmer field, I mean, for state championships is it's something special. So, I mean, we appreciate all those moments, getting the people on their feet, um, big, uh, like three, two pitches, bases loaded, all that. And yeah, that, that was awesome. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can always notice that because you're probably locked into the game, but there were moments where the Staples and the Ward people were all on their feet cheering, like, mm-hmm. it's the it best got, environment I've been around in high school baseball. It got yeah. wild. I mean, there were so many people who were not part of that, like, not Staples or Ward fans there. Like, the HK coach, who had just won the night before in a game that was started an hour late, and they didn't get out of there till like, 11 o'clock, he was there bright and early. I'm like, Coach, like, what are you doing here? He's like, oh. I'm not missing this game. Yeah, um, there's other FCI those... coaches there and ADs. It was great, great environment. Yeah, it really was, and it, you know, it, it was really nice. I got to I got to talk to Zach Roderick and, and John Heinzman for a little bit, but it was really cool to see some of those former guys back. Did uh, you know for the players? Did they have any words of wisdom for you guys before? Yeah, before all the big games, um, we had text from Heights specifically just telling us like he loves us. We you trust us, we can get the job done. Just words of encouragement like that. And then um, from Declan O'Hara back 2021 captain, he texts us before the playoffs start. And just guys like that who just really did a lot for the program and are really good leaders for us. 
That's awesome, guys. Uh, congratulations again on, on winning, you know, all your championships that you've won. And I'm sure you'll have great summers <laughs> and you're having a great graduation and all that stuff. But congratulations. What you've done is really, really special. And I, and I hope you guys can appreciate how great it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are back on high and tight. Uh, we want to thank all the coaches, all the players for coming on. Um, I love talking to the kids when they're loose and relaxed and out of school and graduating. And <laughs> yeah, they just they they're 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 a little more comfortable talking to us in this in this setting. And the coaches are always more relaxed too. I mean, it's it's tense when you're going through a state tournament and going through one and done playoffs and. Especially a yeah. team like Ward that had so much pressure on them all season. Like Brett becomes a little bit of a different person, a little more mellow as he gets yeah, into, yeah. into also, summer it's, summer Brett. You know? It's a lot of <laughs> it, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, it it's the hardest thing to do. It's a, not a single elimination sport. Right. Not it's not at the little league level. It's not at the college level. It's not at the professional level. And here we are doing it in high school where there's immense pressure. I mean, look, high school sports are gigantic in this state. We don't, you know, other than UConn, you know, we, we don't have like a Yankees or a Red Sox, you know, even though they're talking about bringing the Whalers back. <laughs> like, you know, like this is what we have in this state and this support and these towns, you know, we heard from from players talk about how they had their towns behind them and they, they would go out and hear from people from the town who might not even know who they are telling them, Hey, bring it home, you know, win us a, a state title. Like it's a big deal. It's a lot of pressure and you can't make a mistake. Like it, it, there is no room for error in those games. Um, and you can see it. I look not this year, but we've seen teams in the past, you know, the moment made them a little too tight and uh, made some easy mistakes um, you know, there was some saw, of that. I saw it a little bit. Saw, it, saw it a little bit, bit here, but not enough where it completely like changed the game. But, um, but yeah, it's just you know, it's a lot of pressure to put on, you know, uh, high school kids. So it is nice to talk to them when it's done. They've completed the goal. They've been happy. <laughs> they've been able to celebrate and enjoy it. And now you're talking, and it's not about what's and ifs and woulds. It's it happened, and now we get to. Uh, to kind of, you know, revel in it for a little bit. So it is really nice. And and the exciting thing is, is a lot of these kids are going to go on and play at the next level. And a lot of them, you know, their baseball careers will continue. Uh, we'll get to watch them from afar. I mean, look, I'll tell you this, like going to the Ward game, like, you know, Zach Broderick was there, uh, John Heinzman, like two kids. They were on this episode last year. And mm -hmm. um, they had, you know, the only player I think back, the only player from Ward's team last year that did not go to the final that graduated was uh, Roman DiGiacomo. He was a little busy uh, playing for Duke uh, in the world in the College World Series. Still playing, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. they're out. They're out. Yeah, now, they're but, out now. But, but he was playing. He was. He was playing. playing. So he was a little busy. Uh, couldn't make it. But yeah, that was just really cool to see. Uh, Staples had alum. Guilford had alum. I mean. Just, HK had a huge had alumni seen. section because they were all there to see Coach Brooks. Yeah, and there was, I mean, there were, I'll tell you this, there were reporters who used to cover HK who don't anymore who were there to watch him hopefully win his first state title. And I thought that was, that really, was really cool. And I thought that speaks volumes about uh, Coach Brooks as a person. Um, so yep. that was really cool. Uh, it was just, it's just the best weekend uh, it's sorry it, it it's better than mohegan weekend it's better than the football championships weekend uh it's better than the hockey that's not even a weekend anymore it's just it's just better <laughs> it's just it's the best one and i i stand by that i you're not getting any arguments from me and i love mohegan sun but baseball is obviously both of our favorite sports and and we love palmer field and we love the you know, coaches the only, and the only knock on mohegan i love mohegan Right about the third game, middle of the third game, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I got to do this for seven more games. <laughs> like, it's a lot of well, games. It's it's oh, more it's games than baseball. It's a lot. Yeah. It's more games. That that is true. Yeah. Um, but I had a lot of fun this season doing this. I know that. I mean, Pete had a whirlwind of a of his life too. Got married this year. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, this will be a very memorable spring for me. Very for memorable time. spring for Pete. Uh, saw one of the best games he's ever going to see in a state championship. And he's actually, we're, we're going to give Pete some time off. He's going to go on a honeymoon. He's going to relax. Yeah, I pushed my honeymoon off for him. all of you. Uh-huh. That's He pushed his honeymoon off for high school baseball. That is not a lie. <laughs> so I hope all you people True. appreciate what, what this guy does for you. Um, but we actually, we do it because we love it. I mean, yeah. We love it more than anything, and and that's why we do it, and that's why we, we love it more than anyone. Uh, Possibly, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, but it it is it is the best. It, it is the most fun, and it is you know we get the most interaction with the baseball players and the coaches and the teams, and it that makes it special. You know, hearing from parents, and parents coming up to me, they're like, "Oh, we love high and tight." You uh, you guys told us to say hi, so I'm saying hi. I'm like, "Hello." Yeah. You know, the interaction it, with you guys is awesome. It's we awesome. both here at games, uh, you know, semifinals, finals. Uh, the grounds crew up at Municipal was talking about it, and like, it's it's yeah. it really means a lot to us that you guys listen to the show and and care about it, and that yeah. allows us to keep doing it. Um, and then, man, I can't imagine not doing it at this point. I mean, yeah, no, it's it it's the best, and uh, just thank you everyone for following along and uh, supporting the show and, and everything that we do. It, it, it means a lot. We're trying not to get Pete too choked up. He usually gets a little choked up <laughs> at the end of the, at the end of the high and tight, which again, tells you how much he loves doing it. Uh, so I'm just going to say for Pete, I'm Scott. We will see you next spring on high and tight. And for the last time, I love you all. <laughs>